Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel. That channel is Deb Chanel's 48th World and I am Deb Chanel. Good evening everyone. And guess what? I ran across a recap that someone did from all, wait a minute, from all about the tea. Um, the author of this particular article uh, is Amanda Brawley. And she did an excellent job of a recap review on the Married to Medicine episode that aired on this past Sunday, season seven, episode 13, uh, Swap Till You Drop. And I'm going to get into my review, honey. I'm going to use what she had summarized up and give you my spin on it. And hopefully it turns out to be a hit with you guys. Okay, so let's give her the props. She's uh, the author of this particular article, a recap that she did on Merit to Medicine. Uh, again, that's season seven, episode 13, titled Swap Till You Drop. And she's working over there at All About the Tea, doing her recap and review of the show. So let's give her a little background history of her. Uh, she focuses on reality TV shows, recaps for All About the Tea. Amanda is a 30-year-old wife, mother, and self-proclaimed Bravo TV junkie. Okay, I can get with our red on her. When she's not watching Bravo, she's writing about it, reading about it, or listening to podcasts about it. Mm -mm, triple threat. All right, girl. I get by with a little help from Bravo TV. So, congratulations to her. Thank you for uh, writing up your recap, your review, and let's see how we can spin it on my channel. But yes, let's go on into it, shall we? She goes to write on this week's episode of Marriage to Medicine. The drama continues in beautiful Mexico as the couples deal with the aftermath or stripper gate. Now, I did see that particular episode in the stripper gate that they're talking about. It was really playing on um uh, or the men were getting the women back for having their little uh sip and paint type of party where they were having all of that nah, shoot now that was something to behold <laughs> when toya had her birthday party slash sip and paint she did that the only thing honey them men up there were butt naked and everybody was partaking of the scenery, including Dr. Heavenly. Because she going to make like Dr. Damien's the only man for her. The only man she want to see. And this, that, and the third. But honey, she got an up front, up close view of somebody else's ping ping. Okay. And they had the nerve. One of them had the nerve to pick her up. But she wasn't beating him down. You know what I'm saying? She was just holding up in the air saying, okay, honey. Um, little boy put me down. And honey, when he did put her down on the floor safely, she was just like, Ugh. <laughs> like she had got an orgasm just from being up there in the air that little time. Okay, I'm like, I don't have to sit yourself down, girl. But anyway, um, they were planning on getting the women back. So they went and visit, uh, which was for Cecil's idea. They went and visited a strip club while they were over there in Mexico. All right. But going back, she's touching bases. She's focusing on Tanya. Uh, I mean, Toya Bush Harris at this time. She goes and write, uh, Toya Bush Harris wastes no time calling the men out, stating that Eugene already told her they all received lap dances the night before. The men remain rather cold, coy. Let me get that straight. The men remain rather coy, but ultimately appear very guilty regarding their transgressions in this particular situation. Quad appears to be the real winner since she's currently doesn't have a husband. Now, how did that work out? Ain't God good. <laughs> But I don't care what nobody say. The men's little strip tease party that they had was nothing on the sip and paint the women had. Only thing I can say over there in Mexico, they were trying to give give you a little play, which I really particularly called it like straight up prostitution over there. But it don't seem like nobody was, you know, trying to call out no file in the scene. Like I guess if you got caught in the act, 
it would have been a ticket or you probably had to go to jail for some infractions of, you know, solicitation of uh, a female wanting to sell her body because she did get on that uh, microphone. Or they picked up what she was trying to whisper in Damien's ear. Did you want sex? I'm like, man, you better be glad out of hell and then fall through, honey. It would have been a very big misunderstanding. Okay? Very big misunderstanding. But luckily, she stayed her butt at the hotel. And it was something to think about in the aftermath. Okay? So, we're going back to the article. She said, um, Cecil. Cecil makes it a point to announce on the bus in front of Dr. Heavenly Climbs that Daddy Damon did not want to participate in the outing to the Gentleman's Club. I appreciate what you're trying to do here, Cecil, but liar, liar, pants on fire. And see what I'm saying? Heavenly not even listening to somebody that's trying to give her true tea. It was Cecil's idea. Okay, he wanted to loosen the men up, and it was just probably their second to last day in or last night in Cabo so they want to do it up big time and somewhat get the women somewhat bothered by what could have transpired but didn't you know what I'm saying I'm like hold on the person that was sending up their word about uh somebody getting too close to her husband without the heaven the rest of them were like honey these men gonna do what they want to do with us or without us with us or, or not in front of us in front of us, not in front of us. Sight unseen, it doesn't matter. If they want to get down, they want to look at women, they're going to do it anyway. So why waste your time and your effort of getting mad? But honey, Dr. Heavenly went here and there, honey. She ready to tear somebody up. I mean, literally. But anyway, leaving from that situation, um, going back, it said, In a true feel-good moment, the Merit to Medicine's couples put their differences aside and switch gears in order to fulfill their mission of giving free medical care to the local citizens of Cabo St. Lucas. Dr. Contessa Metcalf admits that this is the work she's truly passionate about and would even do it without any payment. So you're going to go over there to Mexico and feel sorry for them over there. And they're uh, low-income, poverty-level people. But you got the same people over here running in Georgia. Girl, you get that same spirit, that same momentum, and that same motivation and come back and bring it to these homeless people, especially out here in the Georgia area, okay? You can pick any county you want to go through because you're going to see a lot of homeless people out there trying to make ends meet on their own little level, okay? But anyway... Yeah, when you get back to Atlanta, Contessa, you're going to be hollering again about you wish you could go back to school and finish your endeavors and all this kind of crap. Girl, get out. Sit down somewhere, Contessa. But moving back to the article, it says, um, back at the hotel, the couples meet for some good old-fashioned team building activities followed by a beautiful lunch on the beach. The competition proves to be pretty fierce and any hopes of team building are left waiting in the sand. Dr. Simone Whitmore never misses a moment to be messy and proceeds to pair each of them up with someone they've had some beef with in the past. Team Dara, a.k.a. Damon, and Mariah, they hook up, take home the W, and Mariah is quick to point out that Damon did not cheat this time on the shade. The conversation turns back to Strippergate with Dr. Jackie Waters admitting she's never been to a strip club. Go figure. That's why you kind of uptight, Jackie. Oh, okay, maybe you need to go to a strip club. Maybe somewhere where it has some male exotic dancers, okay? And maybe you can get your little groove on, you know what I'm saying? Not touch it, but see it just like you did at the sip of paint. You was just all down. All in all those young men glory, okay? They birthday suits. Body, body, body. Body, body, body. Right? Uh, but anyway, um, Heavenly confesses that she doesn't like them because she knows what goes on in those places. How you know, Heavenly? Have you been that girl where you were stripper back in the day? Let us know, girl. Because you sure got insecure. Or did Damien cheat on you in the past prior to y'all second and third child? What, what was really going on? Because don't nobody understand where you coming from. I mean, only people that feel that way are like pretty much nobody, Heavenly. Because 
Mm, it's just a, a, a man's nature. And you have somebody that you definitely look like you got under control. He may have lusted in his mind. Well, you can't penetrate up there, but he didn't do any infringement from what we saw. He was pretty much all tight. He was scared because he had cameras everywhere. He knew how Bravo would get down there, play that stuff back in a minute, especially where Union died. And he didn't want to go home with you and all your uh, this, that, and the third. He didn't want to go. But hopefully he'll get to see you and how you really portrayed yourself so he can say, buddy, buddy, what you do that for? And then you try to make me feel guilty when I ain't do nothing. The lady just sat down on me. Oh, buddy. But I saw what you were doing up in that air. Mm -hmm. But anyway, moving from that situation. Um, Helen says, in an interesting revelation, Contessa reveals, unbeknownst to Scott, that she's accidentally stumbled into a swingers club once. Oops. Child, only way you stumbled, your girls was going to take you there anyway to get you a lap dance here or there. But, and you probably was a little intoxicated, but you knew good and doggone well where you were at. And more than likely, once you saw the atmosphere, you knew you was in a shaker booty club. All right. Get out of here and contest some of you just fell through. Right, right. Okay. Anyway, she writes later on in the evening, the couple celebrate their day of the dead by painting their faces. Except uh everyone except for Cecil, who spent too much time watching basketball and was unable to get his face painted. Simone seems none too pleased. Quan stuns the group coming out dressed as a dead bride, complete with a white dress and all. The irony is certainly not lost on Mariah. In an effort to right a wrong from seasons past, Simone takes the moment at dinner to share with everyone her heartfelt love letter she wrote to Cecil. Cecil seems genuinely moved and appreciative of the gesture, stating that it was worth the wait. Better late than never, I guess. Now, I heard some people say that the uh, letter she wrote, and even Dr. Heavenly, she has her own YouTube platform. She was over there, Joan and Cecil, talking about she could have wrote a better uh, love letter to Simone, given the chance. I was like, you always can do something better than somebody else, Dr. Heavenly. We know you want it to be the Dr. Heavenly show. <laughs> But baby girl, it's not. It's married to medicine and you have to film or not because you don't really have to be on the show, boo. We do like your antics here and there. But like everybody else, you can be replaced, boo. So don't try to tell the executives what you think. We all want to see because, honey, you would be pretty much X'd out. Not hardly being shown because you're just too abrasive. You just... Uh, Jump on everybody that uh, feel like they ain't got no substance. That you deem they ain't got no substance. Because you sure don't be jumping on Simone. You definitely don't even try jumping on Dr. Jackie. And who else? Because you're getting to be a situation where nobody want to feel with you, boo. Because you already dog toy y'all as much as you can. And she's the most generous, playful one on the show. Okay? And Claude, you done definitely alienated her with this mess with Carmen. And you trying to take something back that you knew probably was true. Okay. You just blurted the shit out. Thinking it was going to be good for TV. Never thinking about nobody else's feelings. Only considering your own. But let's throw a stripper out there for Damien to hunch back on. And then, oh, we got another side to heaven. She ready to shake it down. Tie it up. Put fire on it. Okay. But anyway, moving from that situation. We go to where Simone takes, oh, and wait a minute, Simone then takes the opportunity. Hold on. Elijah. Okay, we're going to set him on out. But it says, uh, Simone then takes the opportunity to encourage the couples to share with the table something they would like to leave in Mexico and something they would like to resurrect and take home. Buffy Purcell states that she would like to leave the pettiness in Mexico and resurrect empathy. <laughs> like, doggone, Buffy. Didn't you and Dr. Jack when y'all first arrived in uh, Cabo St. Lucas, y'all got into it with each other at the table and you had to tell Heavenly to shut the F up. Do you not remember that girl? I don't understand. Now you coming back talking about the same old mess. 
girl, I'm liking you already, honey. Because <laughs> anybody that can keep and stay on Jackie's behind is good with me, girl. Is good with me. I'm like, dang, I thought y'all had let that rest, but you done brought that crap back up. So were you feeling some kind of way, boo? Did she make you feel some kind of way after the first day that y'all arrived in Cabo? Nothing really changed after that meet and greet. Or when y'all were at the fireplace where y'all were celebrating Quad and her, you know, farewell to her marriage and hello to her single life and wishing her well and all like this. You remember when she really gave a heartfelt apology, but nobody was in uh, the particular area that you all were. They were scattered around doing other things. So she kind of like uh, talked to you privately, you know, and wanted to keep that on her low blow. But she was just giving you her, you know, a uh, warm felt uh, apology and you accepted it so now you get back in her ass about it girl tell me you so you saying empathy since Jackie don't know that but Jackie do know something about well no she never cared a baby I don't think my fact checkers get in there and let me know but both of y'all haven't had the opportunity to have a baby of your own so Y'all share that similarity. But from what you're saying, Buffy, you can carry a child. You just can't carry it to the full term. But Jackie, she don't have the baby making parts is what you're saying. So she should have a lot of empathy and sympathy for you. Okay. All right. Good luck with that, baby. Good luck. Okay. Then we move on to the next section. She writes, a triggered Jackie counters back that she would like to leave toxic friendships in Mexico and take home authentic friends. Shots were fire. <laughs> Woo child. What you talking about? I bet it was something hot. And I wish I could have given my spin on it. Cause hun, I know if I would have saw that, I probably spent the whole time talking about Jackie and, and uh I'm gonna call her Barbie. Jackie and Buffy, hun, it wouldn't have been no need for this other stuff that we were talking about that she felt it was necessary, meaning the article that I'm reading from um Miss Browley. But, you know, this is what it is. I'm just grateful that I can read a little bit of what she was pretty much saying. But honey, baby, shoot. I don't even, I done lost a doggone article fooling with y'all and me getting so excited about it. Dang, let me see if I can bring it back up. Oh, Lord, I tell you. When you can't get it on your own and you have to use other people's resources, it's a hot mess, honey. It's a hot mess. But I would have given anything. But not giving anything, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't that much of a junkie on these reality shows. But, um, Tad, let me see. Shoot, now how did that go? They got me wanting to purchase it on Amazon. I'm like, wait a minute now. I ain't trying to purchase no uh, sitcom. Let's see. Let's see. I can't even find it. Dang. That really burns my cookies when I start something and then something happens and then I can't get it back. Hmm. Let's see here. Okay, I got it back, y'all. So let's skim through. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Oh no, this is going into something else. Shoot, shoot, shoot. That was going into the first fight that uh, they were having when I was telling you all. But I'm pretty sure y'all saw it too, hell. 
But uh, it just seems like it's just going into they basically was having a fight from hell. Um, shoot. Dr. Jackie. Let me see. Let's try this one more time, guys. Season 7, episode 13. Yeah, she's doing, she doing some everything. She doing the walking dead. Mm -mm. Well, anyway, basically what was going on was, because I, I didn't get a chance to read it. I usually like reading it with you guys. But she was basically just saying that her and Jackie were getting down deep with the stuff. Uh, Jackie was pretty much like she didn't want to take fake fraudulent friends uh back with her since it seems like that's gonna be what but buffy is all about anyway she just wanted to leave her in cabo st lucas honey she cool with her other friends but she ain't got no time for buffy because she don't apologize uh i guess two or three more times and she like she all she apologized all out she ain't finna be bothered no more <laughs> She ain't better be the bottom no more. So that girl can go wherever where she want to go. Don't come to her because she ain't got nothing for her. But, you know, the hand, like talk to the hand. I can't be your friend no more because we done been there. We done done that. And you taking me through all these loops and hoops and, and shapies and shoops. And I can't take it no more. And that mean girl that we saw came out when they first landed in Cabo St. Lucas. When Buffy was like, she didn't like what um, Jackie was saying about her being infertile and all in front of all, you know, the strangers to her, but guests to her and her friends. But she didn't know them folks and she just didn't like Jackie putting her shit out there like that. So basically, they're not going to be friends. They they didn't come their friends. And they ain't going to leave their friends. So I can't get the um, thing back. That I really wanted to uh, continue reading from her article and seeing what she really had to say. But um, I guess yeah, legit, yeah, what it is. Yeah. Right, guys? If you didn't get a chance to see it. But I think that was pretty much the gist of it. Um, they're leaving, you know, uh, they did that missionary type of work that they always seem to do when they... Um, leave and go on a trip and they spend a week or so or i should say a week and the last two days of the trip they get their stuff together and um try to make bags or goodie bags for the people that they're gonna be seeing and then that extra day they take all that stuff with them and give it out to the needy or the ones that they felt really needed the items and they go and give their little um checkups on the patients you know basically it's just minor checkups and stuff um like checking their blood pressure taking their glucose levels um just mediocre type stuff nothing because they i mean it's a poor country in a sense so it's not like they have everything accessible to them that they can go because I, I heard someone say on during their were um review that um one of the physicians was out there writing a prescription and they were like where are we gonna get this from we ain't got no money <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord, why y'all didn't bring samples of antibiotics or samples of, you know, medications for, like, high blood pressure or whatever until they can get seen uh, when money comes in? Or, I mean, I don't know what the fix would be because even if they do have um, symptoms or been diagnosed with having hypertension, I mean, you got to have somewhere to control it if you're not doing herbal type stuff. Uh, you have to have the pills. So if they're in a situation where they can't afford the pills and you give them some pills that you may have brought with you. You know, how long that's going to last? Blood pressure more than likely 
especially with the black community or the black race, you're going to have it once you've been pretty much diagnosed with it, unless you're being truly aggressive with getting down in your size if you're heavy or you changing your whole outlook on your eating habits and you've streamlined that to be you know seen as a doable diet and it's low in fat and stuff but child please sometimes it's just hereditary you don't have no weight on you and you still are stressed out about stuff and it's raising your blood pressure so i can see what they're trying to it's just like putting a fingerprint on something that needs to be smushed all the way down you know what i'm saying like if you're making cookies you're just putting a, a little pressure on the issue at hand of the situation you're trying to resolve but you need a big 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 machine behind you to get things done where it's going to be seen as you know your effects that you had caused a great reaction and it's fixing uh the situation for a lot of people when you go you're just like putting a band-aid on a situation and you're not really managing it or monitoring it because you're only there for that day and then you're in hopes that they'll continue to try to do what you ask them to do but if they're in poverty they're going to be like well what do i really need you know in a situation or what do my family need prior to me going to try to, you know, help my health conditions or whatnot? So it's just a, it's a double-edged sword. That's all I can say. But I can understand the goodness that they try to do. But it's almost like you're just putting a Band-Aid on a situation. Just putting a Band-Aid on a situation. But that's all I had, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed that uh, little recap. Because like I said, I didn't really see it. I was pretty much trying to see who had a very in-depth type of recap that i could probably go through it with you all and then put my two cents in on the side but you we see how that turned out child it just went away like i ain't never had it <laughs> to begin with but y'all that's all i had for that particular review my tv is working real good now i did give me two different boxes because I don't know what with Comcast or Infinity. Seeing like when you have their boxes for um, a couple of months or like say three months, four months tops. They be done change to another whole format. Talking about they got another box out. They discontinued that box. I'm like, man, I ain't had this box for a year. And you talking about y'all done discontinued and got something else and that's why it's not working? Because it came up with an error called 225 or something like that. I don't know if anybody, you know, have experienced that before. But... It has it where there's no sound. Your TV is going full blast, but you ain't got no sound. Then it can have the after effect where your screen just totally black. Because at first I thought it was something wrong with the TV itself. Because we had just really got that TV like a year ago. And we don't really play it that much. But, child, it wouldn't even come off. Then it started talking Spanish. I like, what the hell is going on here? You know what I'm saying? Just getting all up in my way. Knowing I needed to tape. I needed to see something to be able to taste something. But that's on my soapbox, okay? I'm just, you know, I love talking to y'all. So it ain't like I'm talking to myself, all right? But anyway, thanks for coming over to the house. Don't uh, forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Let's grow together, okay? That's Deb Chanel Sport Eats World. Get into it. Tell others about me. And definitely share, share, share my video, okay? So I can get into a lot of people's hands. So we can grow up and get busy, 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 busy. All right? But I'll see y'all next time, next video.